By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Zandam for the Zombie Cup for another exciting, thrilling round of this tournament. And today we have Yella, who is on a deck that I've called Pink Empire because it's uh, white and red and full of Fallen Empire cards. And he is taking on Robbie. And Robbie, oh man, his deck is something special. He's uh, playing against a deck I've called Titania's Control because it's a control deck built around Titania's song. It's got no creatures in it. Um, it's got healing solve in it. It's just, it's a very special uh, brew, you know, and I'm really looking forward to discuss it in the deck tech section. Uh, it's, it's a cool deck. It's a cool deck. Also love the deck of yellow, by the way, but just this deck is something special. But anyway, more about that in the deck tech section uh, of this video. Before I continue, I would first like to tell you something about the rule set of this tournament, because we are playing according to the Swedish banned and restricted list. And that means that we have no mana burn and there's only one strip mine. But because uh, the organizer Derek is also celebrating 30 years of a Fallen Empires, we also have Fallen Empires allowed at this tournament, but him to Turek is restricted. So there are a little, you know, some ins and outs uh, with the rules here. If you want to know more about those rules, uh, by the way, check the description below. I always put information about the rules in the description of the videos that I make, so you can find more information there. Um, and uh, before I jump into the deck decks, I'm going to start with the deck of uh, Yella, that's a player on the left. Uh, I first uh, would like to ask your attention for a message from our great sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. Okay, and we are back and ready to dive into the deck decks. Let's start with the deck of Yella and his deck Pink Empire. And here we see the deck of Yella. Well, actually not the deck of Yella, just a few pictures of cards in his deck. I don't have a deck photo, unfortunately, but I do have a pretty good idea about what he wants to do. He's got a red and white deck. Uh, with actually a substantial amount of Fallen Empires in there. And he's playing this, I wouldn't call it Pink Weenie, because he's also playing with some bigger creatures and some more control cards. Um, but he kind of has that same strategy of playing out a lot of creatures, kind of the swarm strategy, uh, keep turning them sideways and just trying to deal quick damage um, and have that build up where you start with smaller creatures, kind of go and end up your top end is kind of a Sarah Angel for five, right? The four, four flyer. But he's also playing with cards like Rock of Courageous, which I really love. I mean, I think it's so cool that that card sees some love. Um, he's playing Granite Gargoyle, which is a card you do see more often now in Pink Weenie. It's quite good. I feel it's a little bit underestimated because um, the fact that you can pump the toughness means that you can sometimes make it survive a Lightning Bolt, make it survive a Siani Blast. Uh, which which can make it very annoying to deal with for your opponent. Um, and of course, because in this tournament you can add Fallen Empires, I feel that the red-white decks uh, get stronger because of that, because you have some nice additions uh, to your creature base. And you can see those creatures here in the middle. Um, you've got Ecation Javelineers, so it's a 1-1 one, a one, one for 1 white. Comes into play with a Javelin Counter, and you can tap it, take the Javelin Counter off, and deal 1 damage to any target. And this may not sound like much, but it's actually pretty good. If you, for example, combine Lightning Bolt with Ecation Javelineers, you can take down a Sarah Angel of your opponent, or a Suchi, uh, so it's pretty good. And of course, in an aggressive deck, sometimes that last point of damage uh, can be all that you need to win the game. So then your Javelinier can give you the victory with the Javelin counter. Um, and then, of course, there's the Order of Lightbur. Order of Lightbur is just, it's a great card. It's interesting how, as a little Timmy, I underestimated the pump ability. So Order of Lightbur is 2 white for 2 1 first striker. No, just a 2 1 with protection from black. It doesn't have first strike. You can give it first strike, but you've got to pay 1 white. And you can also pay 2 white to give it plus one, plus O. Oh, so you can make it a little bit bigger, right? So um, that in combination with First Strike makes it really good, but also with these type of decks where at a certain point you can be kind of mana flooded and then you can pump those mana into your Order of Lightbird, which is really, really good. Talking about pumping mana into something, we also have a Combat Medic 
And this combat medic is kind of the oddball out, right? Because he's playing with a lot of cards that creatures that are pretty good offensively, but this is really a defensive creature. Well, actually, it's a, also a combat creature, um, but it's got no power, right? It's an O2. It's one white and two. I love this art by Anson Maddox. Uh, you can pay one white and one to prevent one damage to any player or creature. So the combat medic is actually really good at being a medic in combat. You know, it can help creatures survive certain blocking, um, you know, scenarios. So combat medic is really good if you're expecting to be in a in, in a combat heavy uh, matchup. Now, the bad news here though for um, for Yele is that he's playing against a creatureless deck. So I think combat medic really shines when you're playing against another deck that's also creature heavy. Nonetheless, combat medic can still be good to, for example, uh, save your creatures from a lightning bolt, save your creatures from uh, an AO pile, the card that we see here on the right. So it can still have its value, but I think it's it's better in like creature when you're playing against another creature heavy strategy. Now on the right side, we see of course lightning bolt, disenchant, those are kind of auto includes. I think one of the reasons to play uh, with red, to combine red with white or to add red, however you want to put it, is because you have access to Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt is so good. And of course you have access to Wheel of Fortune because sometimes with these decks, um, you can empty your hand pretty quickly. And then of course a draw seven is really good. Uh, what's also nice again is this card from Fallen Empires, AO Pile, we just uh, briefly discussed it earlier. I I'm really bad at pronouncing the name by the way, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, it's two to cast, it's an artifact. One tap and sacrifice and it deals two damage to any target. So this is really good. What I like about this artifact is this has given every deck the option to put direct damage in there. So even if you're just playing, um, well, black has drain life, of course, but it's nice then to have AO pile. If you play mono white, then this is basically your only way to deal direct damage. It's really nice to see that being included. Uh, blue, this is great in blue as well. You know, you have that option with the AO, uh, Aeoli pile. So if you're playing, for example, Merfolk Tribal, I would definitely add uh, probably a play set of these in that deck. So. Yeah, it's, um, it's a fun deck. It's a budget deck. Uh, it's red, white. It's got some really cool creatures. So I'm looking forward to see those in action. Hopefully we get to see the combat medic and the rock of courageous. That would be pretty sweet. So yeah, this is um, the list of Yella. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Robi and oh my, what a contrast if you compare that to the deck of Yella, where Yella is kind of this really nice, like budget friendly white red deck. This is absolutely the opposite. Look at it. It's got, it's completely black bordered. We see all the mocks and all the blue power. It's insane. Um, but it's also a pretty cool deck. I mean, I think he's using the power to do something cool. Um, it could end up to be a little bit boring as well. So just spoiler alert, because what this deck wants to do is really control the board, right? Um, there are no creatures in here, right? There are a lot of artifacts in here and there's that one Titania song. So I've called this Titania control because when I'm looking at this list, I get this feeling that Roby wants to control the board, like gain life with um, the ivory towers, four ivory towers in here. Um, you know, maybe deal some damage with Black Vise and Ank, right? He, he, he could win with that as well. And of course, he's got, I believe, Mishra's Factories. Yeah, three of those in the deck as well. So there are other lines to win. But I think what he wants to do uh, ideally is control the board with, you know, the IC Manipulators, Life Gain with Ivory Tower. If your opponent has a lot of creatures, you wipe the board with your, with your Wrath of God. Um, and then at the right moment, at the right time, you play out that single Titania song. And what Titania Song does, it's an artifact from, uh, sorry, it's an enchantment uh, for one green and three uh, from Antiquities. And it says all your non-creature artifacts become artifact creatures. They lose all their abilities and their power and toughness is equal to their casting cost. So if you've got an Icy Manipulator, it turns into a 4-4 creature. Um, and the cool thing is that even if you disenchant Titania Song, the effect lasts until, I believe, was it the end of the turn or the next upkeep or... Anyway, I, I, to be honest, I forgot, but the card's here on your screen probably, so have a read. Um, but it doesn't disappear instantly. That's the most important thing. So even if your opponent disenchants Titania Song, you can still attack that turn with all your artifacts. So I, I find that really, really good about this card. You know, it's not like, oh, it's destroyed, all the artifacts are back to normal. No, 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 no. You can still attack and win the game. So that's pretty good. Um, I think it's a really cool win con. Again, there's only one Titania song. So this is like uber control, right? It's, it's, he's going to try to stop Yella as quickly as he can to stabilize the board and then eventually drawing into 
Titania Song and win that way. Now, like I said, there are a few other lines of victory, I guess. Like he's got Aeo, uh, Aeoli Piles in here, a full play set. So that's eight damage. He's got Ang of Mishra in there. Ang of Mishra is an artifact for two that says uh, whenever you play a land, you take two damage. So this counts for you, the caster, but also for the opponent. So that can be a way to victory. He's got, of course, uh, some draw sevens with Wheel of Fortune and Time Twister in combination with Black Vice. So again, that can be another line um, towards victory. So there, there, there are a few other ways for him to win. And he's, he's got the Mistress Factories that he can attack with. Um, you know, maybe he's going to win with the combination between Titania Song and those alter alternative sources of damage. But I, I think the dream is winning with Titania Song. At least that would be my dream if I would play this deck. Um, what I really like, and I already discussed Wrath of God briefly, but it's Wrath of God in combination with Icy Manipulator and Maze of If. The reason for that is that if you play a maze, what are you going to do as an opponent? You're going to play another creature because you want to deal damage, right? So um, that only makes Wrath of God better. If you play out an Icy, the same thing. You're going to tap down one of his attackers, so your opponent is um, tempted to play out yet another creature. And then again, your Wrath of God gets more value. So Maze of If and Icy Manipulator are great cards to kind of get more value. What you see in a lot of decks is people playing Swords to Plowshares um, with Wrath of God, and th that's good. That's fine if you're if you're expecting a, a creature, um, a heavy creature meta. Um, it's good actually, but it doesn't make your Wrath of God better. You know what I mean? Because if you, you played at one source, you destroy a creature that you could have also destroyed later in the game with your Wrath and gain more value from your Wrath. So a Mesa Vif and an Icy Manipulator help you making your Wrath of God better. So that's kind of what I like about that combination. Um, but yeah, Robbie, this looks like a beautiful deck. I really like it, but it could also be very, very boring. You know, if, if I, I think this is really going to be a match where we see Yella trying to deal as much damage as he can, as quickly as he can, and maybe he's going to be successful. And Robbie trying to, whoa, 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 hold it down, hold the fort, trying to slow him down, trying to find the right combination of gaining life from the tower and not taking too much damage. You know, I, th I think if Robbie can find like cards like Mesa Viv really quickly, if he can maybe get some ramp going, get an Ice manip Manipulator out quickly, those are really cards that can, you know, help him. Um, I also really like the one Healing Solve in the main. I think Healing Solve is sometimes a little bit underestimated, especially since there is so much, uh, there are so many decks with four chains and four bolts. And those decks, I call them like speed run decks, they want to have really short and quick games. And then if you can gain a little bit of life, you're usually at the better side of the stick. So one healing solve can actually give you that extra time you need to eventually win the game. At least that's, you know, that's my two cents. Take, take the advice or leave the advice. No worries. I mean, <laughs> I've hardly won anything in Magic, so... Maybe you shouldn't listen to me do your own thing. You should always do your own thing anyway. Um, this is the deck of uh, Robbie. We looked at the deck of his opponent, Yella, and I, what can I say? This is promises to be a very interesting matchup. Uh, let's let's just go and watch, shall we? Let's go to uh, Robbie versus Yella here at Zombie Cup number three. Game number one, here we go. Yella sitting on the left, so he's playing with white and red, a deck that I've called Pink Empire, because there are quite a lot of Palm Empire cards in his deck. He's taking on Roby, the player on the right. He's playing white, blue, and green. A, a control deck, Creatureless, that uh, wants to win with Titania Song. So, a pretty cool deck. And here we see the Ao Pile being played. And I think Roby is going to track his life there with a Duelist Life Counter. He's got that Ivory Tower, of course, being uh, played, so he gains some extra life. He's on 22, uh, I believe. Oh, look at this. This is gross. He's got the uh, Library of Alexandria now together with the Ivory Tower. That's going to be nuts. And uh, he's going to gain a lot of life. We're, we're in for a long uh, for a long game. I'm just going to take a sip of my coffee here. I hope that Yella can actually put some pressure on the board. It looks like he can. Is he just passing your turn here? It looks like he's put his hand down. Oh, that is uh, that's not a good sign. Good coffee, by the way. Anyway, um, well, let's see. Yeah, probably Robbie is going to draw card number seven, I believe. He's just not going to play anything out. Or maybe, yeah, exactly. Draw a card and then play something. First going to gain life, of course. So he's going to gone up to 24. Then draw card number seven. Then going to draw the extra card with the Library of Alexandria. So that's eight cards in hand. Drop a land, pass the turn. 
Oh, he's actually going to do something. Another ivory tower. Oh, <laughs> that is sick. Oh, man. Oh, man. And this is, I mean, this is what, what his deck wants to do, basically. At the start of the game, make sure you just gain a lot of life. You don't die. And then, of course, later in the game, take it over with your control elements. Here we see an occasion javelin near, by the way. It's a 1-1 one, one creature from Fallen Empires that comes into play with a javelin counter on it. And you can tap it. And then you can deal one damage to any target, but you have to take the javelin counter off. So it's very flavorful that he kind of throws his, uh, his spear, his javelin. And it's actually a pretty good card. It's one of the better cards in Fallen Empires. In the meanwhile, we see uh, Robbie gaining more life, also playing on AO Pile. I mean, you're not going to use it on that uh, javelin here, I assume. If you're yellow, all you can do is just attack for one here. I'm just hoping that he's gonna put uh, that he's able to put some more pressure on the board. So attacking for one. I mean, Roby's life is on 20 something. Should we just leave it at that? And when it goes over to 30, I'll, I'll tell you. Okay, here we have Order of Light Burst. So this is actually a good, usually a good card. Um, but I mean, Roby already has so much life. And that disgusting library of Alexandria has to go. Look at that, he's on 31 now. But Order of Light Burst, the uh, two one pump knights. So for one white, you can give it first strike. Two white, you can give it plus one plus oh, and it's got protection from black. Is that another ivory tower? Jeez! Oh man, I think coffee is not enough for this one. I need something stronger. Ooh, there we see a crusade. That's kind of nice, right? Because now he can hit for five. I mean, it's not going to do much, but at least he's trying. And I wonder if you're Robi, if you're not kind of tempted to use your AO pile on the Order of Light Burr. I, I, I think I wouldn't do that because you, you're gaining so much life, you know. Maybe that AO pile comes in handy later in the game. And if I'm if I'm correct, if I'm thinking about the list of Robi, what we're gonna see maybe is him just playing out more artifacts. At a certain uh, point, play out a Wrath of God to wipe the board clean from the creatures from Yella, and then he's going to play his Titania song. That's kind of what I'm expecting. Of course, more cards. Yeah, why not? Some more <laughs> cards. Why not? Go for it. <laughs> so we see the Ancestral Recall here, and um, this is another one of those matchups where one player has power, the other doesn't. And um, I don't know if you saw the episode last week, but that was quite exciting. We had a Tribal Orc deck doing very, very well against a fully powered deck. So that was really cool to see. I think this first game is pretty much a goner, by the way, for Yelle. He really needs a miracle already. I mean, I don't know if he plays a Shatterstorm main, but that could be a solution. But I mean, he probably doesn't. Here we see uh, some more uh, lands, a dual land. We see a Mox Pearl, another card being drawn here by Roby. He's almost on 40 life now, by the way. He's going to tap two here. There's another AO pile. Yeah, this is the this is the perfect scenario for, for, for Roby, you know. that This is what his deck wants to do. It's it's He's great. He's doing great. Yeah, for Yella, I mean, for Yella, I think this is really about getting information. Because, of course, both players don't know each other's decks. Here we see a Sarah Angel, beautiful Sarah hitting the board, which is a 5-5 because of the Crusade. But still, I mean, Dolby is on 33. He's probably going to go into the 40s now. Yeah, going to draw a card to gain some extra life from the towers. Yeah, that's clever. So he's going to gain 4 life uh, times 3, so that's 12, I believe. Yeah, there he goes. <laughs> that is sick. So even with that Sarah Angel, it doesn't really matter that much. And what I wanted to say about uh, this first game is for Yella, this is really an opportunity to gain a lot of information about the deck of Robi. I mean, the chances are very slim that he's still going to win it, but at least he can continue playing to get some more information. What is it that Robi actually wants to do? Here we see an Ankh of Mishra. So Ankh of Mishra, if you play a land, you take two damage. So hey, a way for Robi to actually deal some damage. Because remember, his deck is creatureless. Yelly here drawing a card for turn. And I have to say, if you're building on a budget, um, you know, pink, pink weenie or kind of pink mid-range, pink flyers, whatever you want to call it, is actually quite a good deck. Uh, because you've got a lot of good white creatures, then you've got the burn uh, coming in from the red side. You can maybe also play a granite gargoyle, iron claw orcs, those are options as well. 
And the nice thing is if you add Fallen Empires to the mix, you've got access to the Acacian Javelineers and the Order of Lightbur. So that deck gets better with Fallen Empires. You have the AO pile for more direct damage, as you can see. So it's actually a decent budget deck. And uh, Robby probably going to tank some more life here. Exactly, going to draw another card. And the yellow plate is second Sarah Angel in the meanwhile, so that could be useful. Here we see a uh, Mishra's Workshop and a pass. I wonder if Robby added his life, because it seems to be kind of on the same number still, like 40, 46, I believe. Well, we'll find out next uh, next turn. There are the attacks with two Sarah Angels and, of course, uh, the Lightbur and the Javelinier sending the Sarah back. So taking 10 points of damage. Going to drop here to uh, 36. There is a Mishra's factory, so Yella taking two points of damage from the Ankh of Mishra. And this makes sense, you know, next turn just... Uh, Attack of your factory. Hey, a combat medic. This is really cool. I love this. Combat medic. I think, is it an O2? It's a card from Fallen Empires. And for one white and one, you can prevent one damage to any target. It's very good in uh, combat situations. I love this art. I believe it's from Anson Maddox. Yeah, we see some more life gain again for Robi. So he's now up to 48, I believe. Ooh, he's going to play out a land. Look at that, he needs more space. Oh, this is so sick. We just have to wait until Robi decides, okay, I've got enough artifacts and I'm going to play my, my Raph and my song. If he has the song, of course. He only plays with one Titania song in his deck, I believe. So uh, here we see Robi tapping... Nope. Okay. Tapping the workshop instead in the jet. Okay, there's the uh, Icy Manipulator. Yeah, ICs are always great in these control decks. There we see a strip mine. He is going to take two damage, though, from the strip. Ooh, forgetting to take the damage. It doesn't matter, but still. Yeah, now he's taking the damage. Very well done. Well done, Roby. Yes, well done. The thing is with, with strip mine, and this happens a lot, and I've done it as well, it feels like you're playing a spell. That's why in a lot of cases people play it, they don't even put it on a battlefield like now, right? They immediately go, I want to take that away. So you forget to take damage in this case, or sometimes even you play a second land, because it doesn't feel like a land. Same same sometimes goes for Maze of If as well. But um, it is, of course, it is, of course, a land. So it's, it's just something that to pay attention to when you're playing. <laughs> And then maybe the, maybe the players are right now kind of discussing how much life, and there are just a lot of triggers. So it's of course up to Robby to make sure that he counts the life gained from his own ivory towers, stuff like that. But it looks like Robby is now on 42. And I think, yeah, now Yell is taking his turn, so he's gonna untap. Upkeep and draw for turn, so two cards in hand it seems. Or does Roby want to do something maybe with the Icy Manipulator in the upkeep of Yella? I mean, that could be going on right now. There could be a reason why Yella isn't taking his card for turn. Or did he already take his card for turn? I, I don't think I saw him draw a card. Oh, okay, so is, is he then tapping down the Order of Lightburg? Could that be the case? Yeah. Or is he only attacking? He's not attacking with the Javelinier. That is... Oh, because of the Mishra's factory, of course. Okay, fair enough. I'm not sure if I saw... I'm, I'm sure, Yellow, you drew a card, but I'm not sure if, if I saw it. But anyway, passing the turn uh, back here to Robi. So Robi's going to gain some life. What else is new? Does he have seven in hand? Because then in response, he can even draw an extra one. Oh, look at that. Okay, so he's back on 40. Going to draw a card for turn, probably card number seven. Going to then tap the library, I assume, or not. Maybe this was card eight, exactly right. Draw your Loha. 
Draw card number eight. Now he's gonna play something. What are we gonna see? Another AO pile. And a black vice. Of course, not useful at the moment. Only two cards in hand for yellow, but still. It's another way to deal some damage. And there's the pass turn. So Yella drawing his cards, probably just gonna attack again, why not? I mean, it's all you can do, right? Just attack. It'll be at the moment of 40. Yeah, there he goes. And of course, uh, Obi can respond, he's gonna tap down an angel, send an angel back. Take three points of damage from the Order of Light Bear because we have, of course, that uh, Crusade still on the battlefield. Yellow not playing anything out, just passing the turn. So more life gain here for uh, for Robbie. We cannot not really see the counter anymore, but he's on 40-something. It's not very relevant, actually, at this point. Card number eight being drawn with the library. There's a tap for four. Another icy, even more control. I mean, look at that board state of, of, of uh, Roby. It's just disgusting. Oh, look at that. And uh, Sylvan Library with a big signature there. Harold McNeil, I believe. So Sylvan Library can be useful. It could get uh, Roby a step closer to... Um, to find the Titania song. There's another occasion javelin here. Remember, they are two twos because of the crusade. Yeah, and what can you really do if you're yellow? I think, to be honest, I would now get to a point where you're like, okay, I have information about kind of what you want to do with your deck. How long am I still going to play this game? Because we are on timed rounds. I believe it's about 50 minutes per round. So if you if this first game is going to take almost all of those 50 minutes, you won't have time anymore to play your second game. So again, this is something in tournaments that you have to think about. It's not just about, oh, if I'm not dead, I'm going to keep playing. No, you got to think about the clock as well. And Yella, it looks like he's, he's a little bit in the tank. Maybe he's considering, um, you know, saying, okay, Roby, you got this first game scooping. And uh, let's continue to the second one where I'm going to be on the play. Okay, there's a disenchant. What are you going to disenchant? There are so many good things here. Okay, he's going to disenchant the icy, it seems. I mean, it's it's nothing. It really doesn't matter much for Roby. I'm just uh, taking my last zip of coffee here. And there Roby goes to untap. Gain some more life. Ay, ay, ay. And also, that, how long has he had that Loa, right? It was from um, turn two, and he started to, to draw cards from it in turn three, I believe. So he's drawn so many extra cards with that. Tapping the workshop, untapping it again. Yeah, first going to draw a card. <laughs> it's disgusting. Oh, man. Did he use his Sylvan, by the way? I'm not sure. Playing another Ankh of Mishra. It'll be tapping two more. Changing his mind though, untapping again. He has one floating from the workshop if he casts another artifact, and he does. Hey, AO pile number four. AO pile like the mini lightning bolt of Fallen Empires. You've got this whole. Um, like, how do you call that? Like, set of cards that refers to the Dark Ritual. Uh, to the Lightning Bolt, to the Healing Solve, to the Giant Grove. And also to Ancestral Recall. That's Conch, Conch Horn. Anyway, here we see uh, another attack. 
A little bit of damage seeping through, but I believe uh, Robbie is still on 40 something. And I'm just really curious to see, you know, when he's going to to end the game, you know, when his moment will start. Yeah, now he's using the Sylvan, putting the cards in order, drawing for turn. Probably going to use the Loa to draw card number eight. There he goes. There's another Icy again. <laughs> oh my goodness, passing the turn. I would be yellow, I would start ordering beer. Drawing card for turn. I mean, what can he do, really? Yeah, just keep attacking, of course. But in response, he's got the ICs again. So, oh, look at that. He's going to go for an Alpha Strike. It's not going to do much, but um, I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Keep fighting, man. So um, sending back, oh, tapping down the two Saras has the May still to send back the Order of Light Burr. Could animate the factory now. But I could also decide just not to, you know, you're taking a risk, of course, maybe Yella has a disenchant or a lightning bolt or whatever. One, three, five, eight points of damage. If he doesn't use the mace. Okay, it looks like he's not using the maze. And Ruby is now going to untap. And gain some more life. I mean, it kind of feels like, like I'm in a poker game and I've committed fully. So I cannot back down, but I already know I'm going to lose the hand, but I'm just going to keep playing. Because who knows, maybe something happens. So Roby here, is he attacking for two, really? That is funny. Okay, there we see AO pile. So in response, he's gonna take it out and it's gonna pump itself. Oh, that is hilarious. Then there's the swords to plowshares by Yella. Oh, that was that was a funny move with the maze taking it out, pumping itself, being sure it didn't die to the AO pile. And I think, by the way, that Swords was was played well because there are really no other targets until, of course, the uh, Titania song hits the table. So yeah, just waiting here, the past turn of Robby. And we really, like I said, we have to wait until Robby uh, finds his key cards to finish this. There's a disenchant, okay, is he gonna disenchant another Icy? Looks like he is. In response, we see that tap down. There's a tap down of the angel and also using the mace to send back probably the uh, order of light bird. So that means uh, one, two, five damage in total. Yeah, he's gaining more than that he than the damage that he takes. So And I guess all that Yella can do here is just pass turn again. There's a card being drawn here. Double AO pile. Okay, we've got action. We've got some movement. That was a double AO pile on Yella. So he's dropping to 14. Does this mean that Roby is going to try to finish it here? First, gonna gain some more life. I mean, his deck is just working disgustingly good at this point. Looking at the top three cards because of the Sylvan, of course, putting it back in order, gonna draw a card for turn. I believe he's got nine in hand at the moment. Now he's got eight. He can play at one other land, he can use the uh, Loa again. Oh, of course, there's a regrove. What is he gonna get back? 
Oh, an icy actually. Okay, I, I thought maybe he would get back the ancestral recall, draw even more cards because I think he's waiting for that uh, Titania song, or he's waiting for uh, the Wrath of God. Actually, looking in. That's funny, looking in the graveyard now of, uh, of Yella, maybe he's worried yeah, about the disenchant. Yeah. You know, if he plays out right, Titania Song, he'll run into a disenchant. Seven. He will see an, uh, an attack, and of course he can use the uh, Ices to tap down the Angels. He can use the Mace to send back the Order, so that means five more points of damage. Which is not going to mean much. I believe he's on 50 at the moment. Hey, a new creature, a White Knight, hitting the board. Yeah, I think obviously the only way Jelle can win this match is if he goes too fast for uh, Rob to kind of get his whole control plan going. So that is really what he needs to do in game two, trying to just board as quickly as he make the deck as quick as it can be, um, you know, and just try to go faster, try to outpace Robby because if he can't, he's going to lose. If he plays the long game, it's all Robby. Yeah, there's a Wrath of God. So now I'm expecting to see that Titania song. So here's the Wrath of God. Or are we going to see the Titania song? That would be exciting. Come on, play the song. Do it. Go for it. There's a land for turn, taking two damage. Four damage, actually. Two Ang of Mishras on the board at the moment. Oh, just a pass, though. Oh, that's annoying. I was getting my hopes up. I mean, that's the thing with these control decks. It, it, it's great that you've got the control, but then it can take so long before they finish it. Here we see Robby drawing another card. We use both AO piles. Okay, look at that. Getting him on 10. Gonna tap two of his lands, okay. What are the plans here? Gonna look three cards deep, so by tapping down all the mana, is he kind of trying to make sure that he cannot interfere with a Titania song? Or am I wishful thinking? So many cards in hand there for Hobie. Absolutely crazy. Going to take four more damage. Because he's playing out the Tropical Island. What is he going to do? It looks like he's going to play an artifact because he's going to tap the Mishra's Workshop. Look at his card collection, by the way. That's pretty sick. Tapping three. Oh, there's a time twister, and he's got the double vice. Oh, yeah, that's not, that's a way of winning it as well. You can win it that way. I mean, Titania Song is a way to win it, but the vice draw seven plan can work as well. Wow, 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 wow! And that would mean for Yellen next turn because double vice it would take six points, go to four, which is not dead yet. And now Robi is also like shuffling back, of course, those AO piles. Which can also kind of get him closer to victory. So Robi here cutting the deck. And um, I'm getting a lot of, well, a lot, but I'm sometimes getting questions about proxies. Like, hey, do you guys use proxies when and where? I always put that information in the description below. And if I don't write down there are proxies, then there are no proxies. So for example, at this tournament, no proxies are being used. So if you're wondering about that, you can always find that in the video's description. But uh, all this cardboard is 100% real. And most tournaments in uh, the Netherlands actually play without proxies. And yellow drawing seven. I am kind of happy here with this time twister. We, we have some action going. And of course, it'll be drawing another card, card number eight. Oh, another ivory tower. That is, oh man. That is just ridiculous. I think that's a lightning bolt being played out by Yella. 
Yeah, just the emptiest hand that makes sense. It's going to take uh, four damage, so going to drop to six. Yeah, I actually, I mean, I don't want Yellow to empty his hand. I just want him to die and we can go on to game two. <laughs> Here we see a disenchant. And it's really nice that Yellow, by the way, I mean, it's admirable that you keep fighting. I would have, I would have picked up my cards a while ago, to be honest. And because of what I said earlier, they only have, in, in most tournaments, only have 50 minutes to play. So if you're locked, you know, you got to make a decision. What are my outs? What are my chances that I can still win it? And maybe I should just start a game two, try to go faster than my opponent, in this case with this matchup, and uh, make it into a 1-1. One -one. More live game here for Robbie. We can't really see it anymore because the Duelist live counter is kind of off the screen for a while now, but he, he must be on 40-something. He's now playing another factory, so that means he's going to take four points. Ooh, there we see a time walk. Okay. <laughs> and also some more damage, I guess. Yeah, I think Yellow's still on six. Exactly, didn't take his turn. Because uh, there was a time walk. So now, oh, now he's going to attack. Okay. Yeah, because he played the factory. There's an AO pile, so... He can put him on two. Well, he can pass the turn. Takes two damage. Going to go to two. And then we see... Oh, go to three. Wow. He's not dead yet. Oh, what a game this is. And look at that. Now he's uh, sprung his cards on the table saying, Okay, you got game one. You got game one. In insane. This was game one. Oh, man. Oh, this was... I, I'm not going to lie. This was tough. This was tough. I'm going to get a beer. I'm going to let these players, um, you know, um, check out their sideboards and, and make some uh, some important decisions. And then I'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. Okay, so go, Yella. To a quick start. Put pressure on. Starting with a basic planes. Not a turn one play, though. I was hoping for, like, Ecation Javelineer, Savannah Lion, some pressure. Not going to happen. Here we see a Mishra's Workshop into an AO pile. AO pile, quite a good card in this matchup. Can kill most of the creatures of Yella. But we saw in game one, actually, that uh, that wasn't necessary. Oh, this is cool. Osai Vulture is a 1-1 one, one flying creature. And uh, whenever, uh, how does it work again? Whenever a creature dies, then put a counter on Osai Vulture, so you can take two counters off to give a plus one, plus one until end of turn, I believe. We see Robby here uh, playing his Icy Manipulator. Yeah, that Mishra's Workshop really helps him. At least he's got an attack now. Okay, there's a Disenchant. That's nice. There's an attack for one. So uh, Robby dropping here to 19. And then he's gonna... Untap, exactly. I thought, ooh, is he gonna do something else? Is he not going to untap? Of course he's going to untap. What is he going to do? There's a Tropical Island. Tapping four. Okay. There's an Icy Manipulator. And passing the turn. So another Icy found. There is a Mountain. And I'm sure Yellow Board didn't all his Artifact Hate from the sideboard. If he has any in there. There's the attack. So he can deal another point of damage. Yay, Roby dropping to 18. There is, oh, so cool, a Rock of Courageous. Sweet to see this card, 3-3 three, three Vanilla Flyer. Well, no Vanilla, because it's got flying, but you know what I mean, it doesn't have any other abilities. Yeah, Rock of Courageous, I love that art. Very iconic card. Nice to see you play it, uh, Yella. Very cool. Let's see what uh, Robby can do. If he can find some more control elements. Oh, there's the tower again. Oh, God. I don't know how many uh, cards he's got in hand now, by the way. Okay, using his uh, Mishra's Workshop to cast that. Also playing a Mox Pearl. 
Interesting that he plays on the Pearl, by the way, because of the Ivory Tower. Maybe you would have expected him not to do that. But uh, perhaps he thinks I want to keep a, a, a land open to animate my factory and I want to keep a, a, a land, a mana, to uh, use my IC and tap something down. That could be the reason. So he's going to animate here and he's going to attack with all three. Then, of course, Roby can respond. So he's going to tap down the Rock of Corriches. Is he going to animate the factory? That's the question. It is risky because you're playing against a deck with a red and green, a red and white, I mean, so it is risky. Is he going to animate or is he going to play like a disenchant, for example? Although there's no white in his deck, of course. So it couldn't be a disenchant. I think. Oh, he is playing with white, by the way. What am I babbling about? He is playing with white. So it could be a disenchant on the Mishra's factory. Yep, there's a disenchant. Taking one point of damage! The Osai Vulture is doing business! That's the third successful attack by the Osai Vultures. Shouldn't the Vultures get a counter now, by the way, because this creature dies? I think so. I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. There's the pass turn. There's the animate. It looks like there's going to be an attack for two here. This aggression surprises me. I'm liking it. So there is a uh, Swords of Plowshares, though. And I believe Yella is still on 20. It's kind of hard to see the dice there on his side. And um, Roby, by the way, going back up to 19 because of that uh, Swords to Plowshares on the Mishra's factory. There we see an Ancestral Recall. Oh, man. I mean, his deck is so full of good cards. It's really tough to battle against it if you're Yella. But who knows? There's a Savannah. Passing a turn. Untap, up, keep draw. Come on, give him a good draw. Ooh, I think I saw an, a, a granite gargoyle there. Attacking! And another damage dealt by the vultures. Vultures doing work. Oh, there's a Sarah Angel. You see Yellow now kind of slamming it down like, take this, take this. And of course, the uh, rock, by the way, should be tapped. Because it was tapped down by the Icy. So he should be tapped. Just a technicality though. And I mean, Roby is on 18. It's, it's... Nothing really seems to happen. But the Osai Vultures is... It has dealt 4 damage on its own. And that's, I mean, that's commendable. That Osai Vultures should, should get a price. Tapping two. What are we going to see? Okay, there's a Sylvan Library. There's a Tundra. There's an Ao Pile. Two Ao Piles. So could use both to kill the Sarah. I don't think he's gonna, though. Very patient player, uh, Roby, of course. And that's important with his deck. So passing a turn, untap, upkeep, draw. Let's see what Yella can do in his first main. There's a mountain. Gonna attack here, putting everything into the red zone. Yeah, Sarah's being tapped four points of damage. So that's the most damage that Yella's dealt in the turn thus far. And Roby actually dropping to 14. So, I mean, yeah, who knows? Will he be able? To get there, next turn he can also attack with the Granite Gargoyle 2-2 Flyer. And you can give it uh, plus 0, plus 1 with uh, red mana. Which makes it hard to kill with the AO Pile, for example. And it's quite annoying in um, in general, I guess, for Robbie Because he needs two AO Piles to kill the Rock of Corriches. He needs two AO Piles to kill the Gargoyle. If he wants to do it now, he needs two AO Piles to kill the Sarah. So there's not really a great target for him. And I'm seeing more red creatures now in uh, after sideboarding. So I wonder if maybe um, 
Yellow put some red flyer flying creatures in. Took out some of his white ground creatures. Maybe took out the Crusade as well. And again, I'm really, I'm really wondering if Yellow has access to Shatterstorm. Because that would be a really good card. I think uh, a card like Armageddon will also be quite good in his deck. Just some cards to make it really difficult for Robbie. I feel like Robbie has just too much space here to do whatever he wants to do. He is a little bit in the tank here, by the way, trying to decide what to do with his uh, Sylvan. Keeps looking at the three cards. Remember, he can draw an extra card, but it's going to cost him four life. He can draw two extra max. So that would mean he goes down eight and he's on 14. So I don't think he's going to do that. Maybe could consider drawing one extra. Exactly going to go down to 10. Oh, ho, ho. Yellow, you're getting close. I'm kind of half expecting a Wrath of God here, but I'm just keeping my fingers crossed for you, Yellow. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Okay, there's a Savannah. Tapping the Mishra's Workshop. There's another AO pile. Okay, so he could start using some AO piles to kind of clean up the board. Yeah, he's going to use two. Oh, not on the Sarah. That is interesting. That is an interesting choice. You would expect him to do that on the Sarah Angel. Instead, going for uh, the Rock of Corriches. I wonder his reasoning behind it, because Roby is a very good player, so I'm sure he has a reasoning behind it. Maybe he just likes the Sarah. I mean, he's got an IC anyway to tap it down. He's like, you know what? I like the card. Let it be on the battlefield. I'm fine. But with the information that I have now, it seems to make more sense to kill the Sarah. And Roby here uh, still in the tank, trying to figure out what to do. Yes, there's the counter on those high vultures. And you actually missed one, my man. Then you would have had two counters and you could have given it plus one, plus one, I believe, next turn. You could hit him for two. I wish, by the way, that that would be a permanent plus one, plus one instead of an until end of turn one. That would make the Osai Vultures a little bit better. Still not good, but a little bit better. But uh, that's the case, of course, with a lot of cards in old school where you think this card, you know, has potential, but, you know, we need to change a few things. Okay, oh, look at this. He's going to use his AO pile to kill the Osai Vultures. Oh, that is funny. Oh man, and the vultures, by the way, it, it did, they've done a lot of work. They dealt a lot of damage. There's the attack for six. Gonna tap down the angel, gonna take two. There are the Cation Javelineers. So that's again that 1-1 one, one creature that comes into play with a Javelin counter. By the way, Robi is on eight. So Yella, you're getting closer. I still kind of feel that, that, that the Robi has it all under control. But maybe not. Passing the turn. Oh, this is exciting. Is Yella going to get there? Attacking with the troops. Tapping down the Sarah. Taking three. Oh, I'm liking this. Roby's on five, right? He's on five for life. Oh, man. There's a maze. Oh, yay, 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 yay. There's a maze. That is unfortunate. But then still, Yella can deal one point of damage. Oh, there's a um, Stone Rain. Perfect. Destroying the Maze of If. Now he can attack. Of course, we're going to see the Icy again. Tapping down the Sarah. Three more points of damage. He's on two. Remember, Yellow also has a Javelin counter still. That's a guaranteed point of damage. He's so close now. Oh, Wrath of God. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, he was so close. There's the wrath. Yella, please tell me that you're playing with lightning bolts in a deck, right? Okay, there's a rock of Kuriches. Remember though, um, Roby has the icy manipulator as well. Only one card in hand for Yella. Oh, what a game. And I believe Yella is uh, on 20 still, by the way. There's the pass. Ooh, another creature. White Knight. Next turn. Could be... The final turn here in game number two. Is it going to be a 1-1? Roby again looking at the three cards because of the Sylvan. 
Can he find another escape? Oh man, you gotta be kidding me here. Another mace. That is enough to survive. Oh, his deck is so good at not dying. He's on two, come on. There's the pass. Find a stone rain, find a disenchant. Oh, three lands in. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, now he's gonna gain life from the from the ivory tower. Oh, this is so bad. Oh, Yella, Yella, I feel for you, man. You're so close. And this is actually the reason why, in a lot of cases, people that play white weenie decide to add red. Another land, of course. Oh man. And look at that. He's he's sneaking back up. He's now on five again. So from three back up to five. Oh, this is horrible. I really feel that Yella here is, is definitely the people's champion, you know, with his deck, but so close, but no cigar. There's another ivory tower. Oh, matters are only going to get worse. There's the pass. Please find something. Please find something. Okay, there's another creature, Order of Light Burr, passing turn. So next turn, he may be able to deal some damage, but remember, Robin now is gaining life. Double Ivory Tower gaining two, I believe. Okay, more even. It's now on nine. Oh, man. He was on two, right? He was on two at a certain point. <sighs> Yellow was so close. You were so close. Oh, look at that. We're at turns. We're at turns. Only five more turns. Yeah, this is kind of what I talked about, right? Tournament magic. Limited amount of time to play arounds. There are the attacks. Yeah, he's going to tap one down, send one back, probably take two damage from um, from the White Knight, right? You want to... Oh, he's taking the damage from the Order of Lightbird, seems. Or is he going to destroy the creature? That's, of course, another option. Looks like he's going to tap some mana. What are we going to see? Oh, reverse damage. Oh, that is really cool. I got to respect that. <laughs> that is awesome. I, I Maybe it's not the first reverse damage on the channel. I think the third one. I remember I played one in an EDH game once on the channel. And I think there was another situation where I saw reverse damage. But a oh, beautiful, beautiful beta, I think, right? Beta reverse damage. Wow. And I actually think that reverse damage is a good card in certain situations, especially when you're playing against red decks, that big fireball, right? There's the Wrath of God, yeah. And I mean, this is pretty much played now uh, with the Wrath and also the fact that there are only uh, a few more turns going. You see that Dice Star, which is now on four. But it was really cool, Robbie, here. Thank you for playing that reverse damage. That was awesome. That was really, really cool. And Jelle, Jelle, you got him on two, man. You were very close. You just needed the bolt for the victory. There's the sorts. There's nothing to sort. So you're picking up exactly. Saying, you've got this, Robby, but... Uh, Yella, again, it's commendable how well you, you fought. And uh, you did your best, man. You got him to two, but uh, it just wasn't in the cards. I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get to see Titania's song. Uh, I really thought, okay, that's a way for Robi to win it. And uh, But hey, he, did, he didn't need it. So, uh, you know, he didn't play it out. Anyway, uh, thank you both for showing your skills right here on the channel. And uh, thank you for uh, showing two completely different decks. Uh, each other you know two completely different strategies and completely different budgets as well so it's really nice to see this uh these two decks playing against each other and i would also like to thank you for watching another episode right here on timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and uh, before you go please take a moment to like share and comment on this video all these things are free and really help the channel move forward and uh next week i'll be back with actually the finals of the zombie cup because how the zombie cup worked there wasn't a top eight what they did is after five rounds, uh, they looked at the two best competing uh, decks and they played against each other for the win. And I've got that match for you next week. It's a very, very exciting match. I can tell you that already. Um, so please uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss that episode. Um, and then there's one more thing. You can also become a patron of the show via patreon.com slash Talks. 
And um, when you become a patron, I you have my eternal gratitude because I need the support of the patrons to keep making these videos for you guys. So if you enjoy what I do, please consider becoming a patron of the show. It already starts for just $1 a month. So if you want to know uh, more about that, check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the ins and outs. Um, and then, yeah, there's only one last thing, right? We're going to go to the end scroll and have a look at our fantastic, amazing, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go. Ik het dus, ik het dus, somber gezien.